Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to create an object-based la laser beam that moves with your player object and is controlled by the mouse. The laser beam will collide and stop with walls, uh, collide and stop at enemies, and it's going to deal damage to the enemies and create particles at the collision points. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to assume you've already have a, a basic understanding of GML and uh, you just want to add lasers in your game. Um, so this uh, tutorial can either work as a stationary laser or as a laser that moves around um, with your character. So. I have already have a player object that kind of moves around the screen um, and kind of does his own thing. Uh, you can go ahead and set this up like, like uh, I have it where you have the player object or um, you can just have uh, the laser in the middle of the room. It's still, it's still going to work the same way. Okay, so I have my player here and I've set the uh, origin at the bottom and center of mine. Um, so that's going to affect where we put our laser in uh, relation to the player. So if yours is in the middle, it, it may change that a bit. I've got a, a wall sprite and that's also the middle center. So you can create a block and this is what the uh, the um, laser is going to collide with. So just call that S-P-R-W-A-L-L. I've also created an object wall, so um, it's just an empty events and uh, the sprite of the wall that we've created. And I've positioned those around the room. You can position them however you like. I'm going to start by creating an object. Let me pull up my notes here. Alright, so I've created an object, a laser gun, um, and I have a sprite already set up for mine. Um, you can, yours can be a rectangle, or it doesn't have to even be anything at all. Uh, but I, I suggest putting some type of uh, visual representation of a gun in there, um, so you can see which way it's pointing. All right, don't need to change anything here, so we're going to go into Add Event and make a Create Event. We're going to initialize some variables here. Um, first, we're going to do LDIS equals 50. This is going to be the length uh, distance from the points here on our on our gun to the end of the muzzle so you can count that you can guess I think mine's about 50 so from here to here and our laser beam is going to come out of the muzzle right here so um, set that up LDIS equals whatever you need it to set up to be. gun right, right equals zero um, so this will be used for the rotation of our gun. This is going to be the length of our uh, laser beam. Beam sound equals no one. So um, if you want to add a sound, I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to set the depth to negative nine. Okay, so now we have that initialized. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the object player and ignore the stuff down here. Um, that's for my player movement, so not, not really necessary in this tutorial. So I'm going to create the gun.
gun equals instance create layer x y instances whichever um, layer yours is at so over here in the room editor in the layers window you have the layers um, set it to whichever name is here so um, mine says that laser gun so we've created the laser gun when we uh, in our player create event um, and we want this laser gun to move with our character so we're going to go over to the step event and we're going to do gun excuse me move the laser gun gun x equals x gun y equals y and I'm going to do minus 16 um, my player sprite is 32 by 32 and the origin is at the bottom so come up 16 and you're at in the middle I've also um, set my player depth to be well, it needs to be right under that so depth to be negative 9 um, and the laser gun is going to be depth of negative 10 so the laser gun will be over it now actually I won't excuse me I'm sorry I want the player to be in front of my gun so whichever one you want uh, set that up uh, you know the the lower the number the closer the object is going to be to, to you so depth of 11 here and in our laser gun it has a depth of negative 10 so that's what that looks like again we're just moving the gun each step with the player so it so it stays in the same location Let's um, go back over to the laser gun. And I'm going to do beam. Alright, so we have our laser gun here, and we need to create an object for our beam. So uh, beam equal instance. We haven't uh, set up the object yet. I'll do that in a minute. create a new object WJ beam um, and I have uh, some beams already set up um, sprite blue I've got uh, let's see what is this width of 1 and a height of 30 um, so you can set yours up like this uh, you can have a height of 15 or 10 um, whatever you need for your laser beam. And the height is not as important as the width so the width needs to be one pixel in width. The height can be whatever you want, but it definitely has to be one pixel in left. And I want you to set the origin to the middle and to the left. Let's go back to the object beam and we're going to add that sprite. Let's see. And uh, if we want, we can go ahead and give that a depth in the create event. Negative 12. Um, I'm setting my depth to negative 12 so it kind of shows up above everything else. Um, and I'm sorry, negative 9. Negative 9 uh, so it shows up above everything else, but it's not going to be above the player. You know, that depends on, on how you want to organize things. This is not as important, so if you get it wrong, um, you can always fix it later. Um, and I'm bouncing around a little bit, so bear with me. All right, we're going to go back to the laser gun, object laser gun. And we'll pick up where we left off. Hopefully, we won't have to jump around too much more. I um, apologize if it's a bit confusing. We're going to do beam. Um, and I'm going to adjust my y scale so it's not as wide 
um, and you can adjust it here or, or in the sprite event wherever you want to. Uh, not as important, but uh, it depends on how wide you would like your beam. That's not going to change. Um, all right. So next, we're going to uh, go ahead and set up a particle system. PS equal part. System create. Um, that's our particle system, and then we're going to set the depth. Yes, particle system uh, negative one hundred. Um, so that's going to make the particle show up above everything else. Next, we'll create the particle. Okay, so, part, part sphere flash equals part part type create. I'm going to do Bar part equal part um, so we're gonna set up start our uh, part is gonna be called part sphere flash um, and we're just gonna do a glo uh, local variable so that it's easier to write when we're setting up this particle so it's gonna be just six lines of code it's gonna be a very simple particle but uh, you'll be able to you can add more particles later this is just um, so it, I can show you where to put these um, when you're drawing your your laser beam. Part type okay the shape is going to be a sphere. I'll set the size. maximum size uh, increase in size um, so it's going to kind of wobble around a little bit in and out um, you can change these however you see fit uh, Um, I was gonna do make color RGB, but just let's just make this simple. I'm gonna do uh, C white followed by a C blue. Okay, very simple color setup. give us a lower opacity so we can see through um, our particle a little bit better. Blend. All right. And that should do it for initializing our variables in the create event. Let's go on over to the step event now. Um, let's actually run our game and see if that created our gun, if everything's working properly. Oh. Got a problem. All right.
right, yeah, delete those parentheses um, after that. Okay, so we've created our gun and it's moving with our player, as you can see. Um, great. All right, on over to the step event. Whoops. Okay. Um, next, we're going to. Uh, Okay, so we created our beam. Now we need to move the beam with the gun. So we have the gun moving with the player. We need to move the beam with the gun. Okay, so beam X equals X plus length dir X, L D I S. Um, and gun rotation. So um, the length distance, if you remember, is the gun the in the middle of the gun to the tip of the gun. The gun rotation is going to be the direction that our gun is pointing. So we'll, we'll fix that later, but uh, this is going to put the beam at the end of the muzzle. So it's going to be very the end of the muzzle. And as we move the uh, as we move the gun around, it's going to stay at the end of the muzzle. And we need to do the same thing for Y as well. Just copy that and change those to Y. <clears throat> so move the beam at the end of the gun. Okay, so um, next we're going to set it up so our gun rotation. Um, rotate the gun towards the mouse position point direction X Y mouse X mouse Y okay now the image angle of our gun is going to be the same as the gun rotation so Image angle equals gun root, right? Okay, so next, if the player uh, presses and holds the left click, if mouse. Mouse check button and be left. So this checks uh, whether or not we are holding down the left mouse button. Open bracket. Close bracket. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a particle at the, mus the end of the muzzle. Particles create our particle system PS. Beam, we're going to create it at beam X and beam Y. And the part is going to be part sphere, sphere flash. As we are holding on this button, we're going to check to see if our sound is playing. So, um, did I set that up? Beam sound, yep, beam sound. Okay, so um, if audio is playing,
All right, so if the audio is not playing of our beam sound, we're going to play the sound. Um, and let's pause here for a minute and go ahead and set up our sound. Sound. Sound player beam. So I've already, uh, already have a sound. Um, you can add whatever sound you want. Uh, you can add it later and you can leave this out for now. You can comment it out in the code, uh, whichever works for you. Let's go back to our laser gun. Okay. Next, we're going to find our target. So, um, To set up our targets. Okay, let's go ahead and, and pause here again and we're going to set up our target. So I'm going to create an object, object, enemy, um, and I'm just going to add a sprite. Um, you can add, you can go ahead and create your sprite and add it here. Um, and I'm, I'm going to add another object, enemy par. So um, you can have as many enemies as you want, and this will be the parent object. So we're going to target the parent object instead of just a single enemy. That way we can um, attack all types of enemies. So we'll add that as a parent. So add an enemy part as a parent to our object enemy. Back to the object laser gun. set the length to be zero here. Let's go. L-E-N-G -T. Why well, can I not spell? Equals zero. Okay, we're gonna reset the length. Every every step, we're gonna reset the length uh, back to zero. And we're gonna change that length here in a second. Okay, so we're gonna uh, here is this next section of code is going to be uh, our collision with our wall and before we do that let's run it and check and see if we have any problems okay, everything's working properly um, you shouldn't be able to see the beam too well here uh, but it's sitting there at the end of the muzzle and there you can see our um, and I clicked, uh, it's creating that flash and it created the sound. Created the flash and created the sound, um, but the sound didn't cut off, so um, we'll, cut, we'll cut that off at the end of this code um, whenever you release. So if oh, colliding with a wall. Okay, so our beam is, this is uh, gonna check where the wall is and it's gonna um, collide with it. So so while not okay if you if you don't know this and you see me setting this exclamation point this is important um I also put it up here um, at audio so this just means not so if not collision point beam X plus We'll write this out and then explain it. all of that okay so while not collision collision point um, beam length there X X 
I have a problem there. That should be a plus sign. Okay, beam X plus length their X length gun rotation. So um, just know that this um, is going to uh, set the length. So it'll be the length and then the rotation of the gun. So it's going to, to check if there's if, if the length is colliding with um, a wall. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, just know that this works. <laughs> um, and it's going to check with the object wall. Precision is going to be true. You know, set the precision to true and make sure that we're not checking ourselves. Um, so, um, basically, when we let's see if I can explain it there. When we um, extend our beam out this way or whichever way it's going. If it hits a wall, um, then the code is not going to run. It's going to run. So if it hits a wall, the code here will not run. So as long as it's not hitting a wall, this, this code that we're about to write is going to run. I hope I explained that well enough. All right, so it's just a simple few lines of code. If is less than 6,000. So this is a magic number here. Uh, you can set a variable, or you can set it to whatever you want it to be. Um, but basically this is gonna stop our the length of our beam from going indefinitely um, forever. So you don't want the length of the beam to keep going and going and going. So it's gonna have a max limit. I just set mine as 6,000. plus equals 10. So as long as the length is less than 6,000, we're going to add 10 pixels to each step. So it's one pixel in width, so we're going to extend it by 10. So it's going to extend out as long as it's not hitting the wall. As soon as it hits the wall, this is going to stop running. Um, and it'll be the exact length from this to the wall. So length plus 10. Um, and then we don't want to get stuck in a loop. So I'm just going to do else break, and that's going to break us out of it, um, so we don't get stuck in a loop somewhere. All right, so this um, this should work for colliding with a wall, but uh, I need to apply that to our beam. So down here, beam image. And we're going to set the image X scale of our beam. Remember, it's only one pixel width to the length. So um, the length is going to go and add until we reach the collision point of the wall. And then it's going to set the image X scale um, to that length. Um, then at the beginning, as the next step, it's going to set that back to zero. It's going to check again, add how much ever we need to and set it back to length. Um, I could do here instead length plus plus. But I found that that actually um, slows down the machine a bit. It uses uh, more memory. So uh, I can, you can do plus 5, uh, plus 10, uh, plus 20, uh, whatever works for you. I'm just going to set it to 10 because um, that works for me. So we're adding just 10 each time um, in this while loop uh, so, so we, don't, uh, we don't use up too much memory. And then I'm going to adjust the image angle of the beam. Beam dot equals gun rod. So um, that is going to adjust the rotation of our beam. So then now that it's pointing towards the mouse. Um, so. Um, and here we're going to create at the end. So we're going to create some particles at the end of the beam as it's colliding with the wall.
I was wrong. There we go. Beam extra Y there. Something's still wrong. Particles create PS beam dot X plus length der X length gun row beam dot Y plus length der Y length gun row. Ah, I forgot a comma right here. I will right, we'll add that comma. Whoa. Okay, so if we're not clicking the mouse mouse check button and be left so if uh, we're doing that we're going to do all this stuff if we're not holding on the mouse we're going to set the beam image x scale back down to zero so it's going to be so it's going to be invisible you won't be able to see it um, and we're going to stop the beam sound this plane all right let's run this uh, so I'll let you see that we'll run this Alright, so there we go. We have a laser beam that shoots out and stops at the walls. We'll turn that down just a little bit. Perfect. All right, so now we need to set up uh, colliding with the enemy. I'm going to go ahead and drop our enemy um, in to the, the room, and in our enemy, I'm going to add an event, uh, and I'm going to give him some health. Which should be equals 100, and I'm going to add a draw event just so we can see his help give me just a second okay so for him I'm going to draw self draw health bar x minus 30 minus 50 Mistakes in here. All right, so we're gonna draw a health bar above our enemy, so we can see what his health going down um, whenever we hit him. So I'll let you put that stuff in exactly as I have it, um, and make sure you're, that you set up his HP to 100 for our enemy. We've placed him in the room, and uh, we're gonna go back to our laser gun. And now we're going to add the collision with the enemy. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze it in. Oh, actually. Squeeze it in right. All right, so next we're gonna check if um, the enemy is in the path of the, the path of our beam, but uh, if the wall's not in between it, so.
right, uh, right here we're going to use a bit of external script uh, found on the web and I'll link that below and also uh, post it for you guys um, so you can put it in your game. Um, basically uh, we're going to use a collision line um, which checks uh, between two points if whether or not an object is there. Um, so we'll have a, you know, you have a point down where your gun is and then the point say at the wall um, now if there's two of the same type of objects and the uh, line is going through both of them it's going to randomly choose one so we want to choose whichever is first so I'm going to use a script called collision line first um, which is actually uh, made by someone else um, and I'll give you the link to that um, so we can fix that issue Um, and I'm just going to paste it in, but like I said, uh, I'll provide it to you so you can um, do the same as well. Um, so, returns an instant idea of an object colliding with the given line and closest to the first point. Or no one if no instance is found. So this works pretty well. I've used it before. Um, just just uh, add that in there in the same way that I've done it. Um, yeah, so... over here okay so here we're gonna do um, our target equals um, and we've already got the target up here but uh, let me just remove that let's let's um, I put that in the wrong spot uh, so remove the target from up here we're gonna set the target down here I say we're going to do this is where we're going to use our collision line first script Okay, so we're checking um, in between our x and y coordinates and uh, and the the end of the maximum effective range of the beam. So um, we're checking if there is an enemy there, and if there is, then we're going to return target is going to be the first one in the line. Next, uh, before we go any further, we're going to check to make sure we have a target. So, if so, if we have a target, we're going to run this code. So we're going to set a variable the distance between the starting point of our beam and our target. Um, next we're going to check if not, I'm going to do another collision line. If not collision line,
So um, if there is not a wall in between our x and y coordinates and our target, then we're going to update the length of the beam to be the distance to the to the target. Alright, and that should do it. Let me put a few of these in here so we can make sure that that is all working properly. Alright, that looks, that looks good. So um, the last thing we need to do is deal damage to our enemy. Okay. So um, if I were to put that in here, let's see how that works. Target HP minus equals one. But uh, um, I think in the beam, I no, I didn't. Okay, so um, that does it for this tutorial. Um, if you enjoyed this, please let me down, know down in the comments below. If you have any questions, also put it down in the comments. Please give this video a like and a thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe, hit that uh, notifications bell, and um, look forward to more in-depth tutorials on Game Maker Studio 2 in the future. Have a good night.